Welcome to a podcast by OpenTheWord.org, where we discuss a bit of Bible, a bit of life, and a bit of politics. Hi, my name is Dean Smith, and in this podcast, I ask the question, do you have a Bodian stronghold in your mind? Bodium Castle, located in southeast England in the county of Kent, is one of Britain's most popular castles because of its massive size and, you know, very photogenic moat. You've probably already seen pictures of it and aren't, aren't even aware of it. But there is something deceptive about this imposing castle that's guarding Britain's southeastern coast. It's not all that it seems. It, it is more smoke and mirrors than motor and stone. King Richard II gave Sir Edward Dellingridge permission to build the castle in 1385 as he had been a faithful servant fighting for the English king in the Hundred Years' War. It seems back then, like a car, you had to have a license or a credit, as they called it, to build a castle as the kings wanted to control who could build a castle because it could be used for you or against you. When Sir Edward started construction, he went all out. He built it quickly. And because of its location in southeast England, the castle was an ideal, in an ideal spot to protect the country's southern coastline from invasion by the French. And when he was finished, it was an imposing structure. The castle, with its massively perfectly hewed walls and its mammoth drum towers on each corner of the, of the castle, was a picture of power in southern England. Sir Edward went even one step further and built Bodium in a low basin of land surrounded by rolling hills. Aside from the smashing scenery, it allowed him to create a lake-sized moat to surround the castle using a natural spring in the area. There were only two narrow wooden bridges providing access to the castle's two gates. The handful of invaders who could navigate the bridge at one time would be easily picked off from the archer slots in the drum towers or have burning oil poured down them from the battlements above. But looks are deceiving. Unknown to the French, Sir Edward was shaking in his boots over the spot that someone might actually lay siege against Bodium Castle, because if they did, the castle was in serious trouble. In fact, there is a debate going on whether Bodium Castle should be considered a castle or a fancy little manor house. Why? Oh, well, when a person actually gets close to Bodium Castle, you quickly realize it's one big optical illusion. Once visitors are inside the castle, they are shocked by how small it is because from the approach, it looks like an enormous, imposing fortress. So how did Sir Edward create this picture of deception? First, when Sir Edward was creating the windows, they were purposely made proportionally smaller the higher they went up, giving the impression that the towers were massive, looming structures. In fact, the archer windows at the top of the towers are so narrow, it would have been almost impossible to shoot arrows at approaching enemies. The imposing drum columns guarding the four corners were also tapered to give them an exaggerated towering perspective. At the top of the castle walls, the battlements are so small they would have been almost useless in fending off an attack. And the lake-sized moat that surrounded the castle was this, the key to this elaborate deception because it kept invaders far enough back that they would have been unable to detect the deception. But those examining the moat today suggest that due to the earthworks not being that substantial, the water could have probably been drained in a day. But nevertheless, the cunning illusion worked because while dozens of Britain's castles lie in ruins, Bodium is still standing, revealing the power of optical illusion. 
that delude people into thinking one thing when the opposite is true. When Moses led Israel out of Egypt into the promised land, he ran into problems with an optical illusion that was rooted in the deeper emotional insecurity of the Hebrews. The Hebrews had just spent several years in Egyptian captivity. They were treated as slaves. They were not only beaten physically, physically, but mentally as well by their Egyptian overlords. And though God had powerfully delivered them from this captivity, that slave mentality that they were no good was still hanging over them. And it showed up on the border of what eventually would be Israel after Moses sent in 12 men to spy out the promised land. The Bible says that 10 of the spies came back with an evil report. But look at what they said, quote, there also we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anak, are part of the Nephilim, and we became like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so we were in their sight. Numbers 13, verse 33, unquote. Notice how they described the giants by first describing themselves, that we look like grasshoppers in our own sight. When I look at grasshoppers scurrying along the ground, I realize how easily I could squash them with my foot. The giants in the promised land weren't that big, and the Hebrews were not that small. But ten spies had turned those giants into monsters. It was an optical illusion created by fear, magnified by their own personal feelings about themselves. They were still slaves living in Egypt, even though they were out of their captivity. And a study a few years back at Penn State University in the United States revealed how bad this problem is. For a full month, the researchers asked a group of 29 chronic warriors to keep track of everything they worried about. Then, a few weeks later, they followed up with this group and asked them what happened to all the worries that they had written down. The researchers found out that 91.4% of the things these people had been worrying about never came to pass, and for several people in the study group, it was actually 100%. Another study came to the similar conclusion and reported that 85% of the people in its test group reported that the things they worried about never happened, and of the 15% who reported that they did, 79% stated that they were over-exaggerated and easier to deal with than expected. This meant that 97% of them were worrying about fake or exaggerated fears. Fear magnifies our problems, making them bigger than they actually are. Fear exaggerates, it changes men into grasshoppers, large men into monsters, and manor houses into impenetrable fortresses. Many times, Throughout the Bible, God tells his children to fear not because our real enemy is fear, not giants or an, or an enemy army. God knew that if he did not deal with this fear emotion, his people could not move forward because they had created invincible barriers in their minds. When David wrote Psalm 34, he was at this point trying to stay one step ahead of the reprobate King Saul who was trying to kill him while trying to find refuge in the neighboring nations. In the midst of this, David writes, quote, I sought the Lord and he answered me and he rescued me from all my fears. Psalm 34, verse 4. The Hebrew word megara translated fear has its roots in a person traveling in a strange land where he doesn't know the people and he doesn't know their culture. He doesn't know if he will be treated as friends or foe, because, and because of this, the person is full of fear and apprehension. David was scared. Other versions state that after seeking the Lord, God delivered it, David from all his fears, but the best translation of the word, that's all, is rescued. God rescued David from his fears. David did not need rescuing from a powerful, vicious army. He needed to be rescued from his thinking. 
God pulled down the fierce stronghold that had captured David's mind. This was his real enemy. And many of us have fierce strongholds in our mind, but we need to realize that they're Bodium castles that are made up of lies and deceptions, and God is ready to deliver us today. Thank you for joining me on this podcast, and we'll catch you again. Thanks again for joining us on our podcast. Please check out our website at opentheword.org. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe to receive notifications of future broadcasts. As well, please take a moment to provide a rating and even a review. Thanks again for listening.